It's officially autumn, which means that our role as beekeepers is to really help prepare our colonies for winter. Now, colonies are doing most of the preparation themselves. Probably the biggest thing is that they're collecting and storing a lot of honey that they can actually eat during the cold months. Another big thing that colonies are doing right now is they are investing in the production of winter bees. So a lot of the brood that's being laid right now is going to develop into winter bees. They have really large fat stores, which enable them to live several months throughout the winter. The queen's egg laying rate is actually reducing and she'll cease egg laying sometime in October or maybe November. It varies slightly from year to year. Also, we're starting to see cooler temperatures. So around 50 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, the bees will actually cluster to generate heat to stay warm. So what can we as beekeepers do to help our bees prepare for winter? Well, we'll talk about that in this video. We will cover nutrition, population, ensuring that we have a fertile queen, ensuring that we have healthy bees, and also wintering our hives. Let's start with nutrition. The food available to your honeybees is really going to depend on the floral resources in your area. And many regions of New York State, including right here in Ithaca, actually have pretty predictable fall flows. This means that most autumns, we have a lot of plants that are producing pollen and nectar for our bees. However, not all regions of New York State have this. So it'll be up to you as a beekeeper to determine if your colonies are still bringing in nectar and pollen. If they're not, it might be a good idea to feed. We often tell folks that colonies need close to 100 pounds of honey entering winter. That's a lot of honey. And that's typically for colonies that were wintering in two deep hive bodies. If there's not enough forage out there to provide this much honey to your bees, then you can feed them with a heavy syrup or a two to one sugar syrup. Two parts sugar, one part water. We feed them a heavy syrup at this time of year because the bees can more quickly reduce the moisture content before they need to cap it. And typically, beekeepers can be feeding a heavy syrup all the way until the end of October. And then it's a good idea to remove your syrup feeders and not to provide any more liquid into your hive until spring comes. The next thing to consider is population. Now we want our colonies to enter winter with a strong population because we want them to have a nice big winter cluster. If colonies are weak, the months of September and October are the perfect time to combine them with other colonies. Of course, you always want to make sure that your weak colonies do not have diseases that can then be introduced to the healthy colonies that you're merging them with. So do an inspection and rule this out first. A colony that is strong enough to enter winter is one that is going to have a minimum of six frames per bees per hive body. So for instance, if I'm going to be overwintering my colonies in two deep hive bodies, I'm looking for a minimum of 12 frames of bees. I consider one frame of bees to be a frame that is covered on both sides completely with honeybees. And this is kind of a good rule of thumb that I use to tell me if the colony is strong enough. If I'm seeing fewer than six frames of bees, then that is a perfect candidate to merge with another colony. Our next consideration is having a fertile queen. Now, even though the queen stops laying eggs in autumn, she's going to start up again in January. So we'd like to identify that we do have a fertile laying queen in the hive entering winter. The perfect time to do this is at the end of September. We know that in many years, the queen will actually stop laying eggs in October. And so if we're inspecting our hives at that time, it can be difficult to tell if there is still a queen present and if she has a good brood pattern. So doing it in the month of September is ideal. So we're looking for two things here. First, we're looking for the presence of a queen. Do I have a queen in my colony? Am I seeing her or am I seeing eggs? This is important to do because a lot of colonies actually swarm in the months of August and September. It's a smaller swarm period here in New York State, but it's one nonetheless. And so we'd like to make sure that if our colony did swarm, we are um, seeing that the colony successfully requeened itself and we have a mated queen present. The second thing that we want to identify after making sure that she is there is that she has a good brood pattern. We want to see a nice solid pattern. This is going to tell us that we have a really fertile queen in our colony. If we're seeing a spotty pattern and if we are able to rule out that that spotty pattern is not from disease or parasites, then that might tell us that our queen is running out of sperm and she's not as fertile as she used to be. So if you can, replace that queen with a mated queen. It can be difficult to find a supplier of mated queens for this time of year. And if you're not the type of beekeeper that has resource nukes on hand at all times to help in situations like these, 
then what you can do is you can remove that old queen that has the really poor brood pattern and you can merge that colony with another healthy colony. The next thing that we want to make sure of is that our bees are healthy, that they're free of diseases and that they have low parasite levels. And autumn is a perfect time to do thorough brood nest inspections because we typically have our really heavy honey supers off and it's easy to get down into the brood. So at this time of year, do a careful check for American fowl brood and other brood diseases and also be aware of what your mite levels are mites start really creeping up in New York State in August and September and they reach their peak in October. This is the hardest time of year to control them and I often see colonies in New York State really struggling with varroa mites and the viruses that they transmit. Be aware for any signs of mite damage. We're looking for things like a spotty brood pattern. For instances where we're seeing bees uncapping cells to leave bald pupae underneath, where they are partially consuming those pupae, where we're seeing brood dying at a variety of stages, if we're seeing visible varroa mites either in the brood or on adult bees, or if we're seeing deformed wings. All of this is telling us that there is damage to the colony from varroa mites. It is critical that we are monitoring our mites every month in August, September, and October, and that we're intervening with the treatment anytime our levels are reaching or exceeding three mites per 100 bees. If you're not sure which treatment to use, or if you have specific philosophies about using only soft treatments or hard treatments, feel free to reach out to us at the Dice Lab, or you can also check out our integrated pest management guide for Varroa control for some suggestions. Once we've determined that we have enough honey, that we have a strong population, that we have a fertile queen, and that we have healthy honeybees, we are ready to winterize our colonies. And beekeepers in New York State are typically doing the winterizing either at the end of October or in November. There is a lot of variety in how to winterize your colonies here in New York State. And we encourage you to try a few different methods yourself to see what works best for your bees. Also, chat with members of your beekeeping club. I'm sure there are a variety of people that have had experience wintering in your own region and can provide some really good advice. These are some basic tips for things that you can try based on what a lot of beekeepers are doing here in New York. The first thing is to winter your colonies in an area that has full sunlight and ideally a windbreak too. The full sunlight not only helps with providing some warmth to the hive, but it can also help reduce moisture issues. The second thing is to reduce your entrance. This can help prevent drafts from getting into that colony if they just have a nice small entrance available. The third thing is to provide a mouse guard. Some beekeepers may also choose to wrap their hives either with tar paper or roofing paper, with corrugated plastic or cardboard wraps that you can purchase, or even with bee cozies. And all of these things are typically dark materials that can provide a little bit of insulation, but mostly help in absorbing sunshine and preventing wind from entering cracks in your equipment. The next thing that most beekeepers choose to do at a minimum is to put some insulation, some foam board underneath the telescopic cover. Some beekeepers will also opt to do something to help with moisture, either by providing a quilt board or a moisture board made of home soot on top of the hive as well. Another option that some beekeepers do is they provide an upper entrance for their bees. This is an additional entrance that will allow bees to enter and exit and perform cleansing flights on sunny days. This upper entrance can also help a little bit in ventilation, so it's another option that you have. And now your colonies are finally ready for winter. So if you have any questions about anything in this video or autumn management in general, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can contact us through email, on our Facebook page, or you can visit our website for more information. We'll see you next time.